There I am. There she is. There I am. Here I am. Here I am. That's my last song. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Hello, hello. How you doing? Oh, thing, and now we're live. We're good live. evening. Good oh, evening. I didn't do that. I did good last week. I did good this week. <laughs> she done done it again. I done done it again. What, what Britney Spears said? Oops. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Oh, hopefully we'll be, um, oh, Jada Janae is watching. Oh, wow. Hello. Cousin. Hey, hey Ada Shay. Cousin. Oh my welcome, goodness. welcome, welcome. Now I gotta watch it because I think this is you see that it's a little glitchy. I'll be it's glitchy again. Bit. Oh, come on. Like that. Uh well maybe it's maybe it's a zoom then because maybe it's zoom because we yeah, we're on, on a different hot spot now. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it won't be. Maybe it was just that initial getting started. Uh, uh, We'll see. Oh, we're sorry. <laughs> hey, Miss Pam. Hi, Miss Pam. We love you. We love Thank you. you. No, we're not playing music. Besides me, we're playing music. Because we were like singing. A oh, bit. yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, Please don't try to we're find not anything. Singing. We're not singing. We're not singing. We don't want to have to not own the rights to no music tonight. <laughs> no. <laughs> Welcome mm -hmm. everybody. Thank you for coming in. It is dumb. yeah, Bye -bye. we're still a little glitchy tonight, guys. We don't know mm -mm, what don't is know. um what is going on here. Mm. Hey mommy, hi mama. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's be close to Oh now it's good to be loved. It is. It? This mm. is the love month. We're celebrating love. How you doing? This my heart. No, is not, not, okay, not, okay. Not, yeah. Look, I'm not, not okay. There, no, it is. there you go. Love. Uh, yes. Love. The whole month. The whole, the whole month. month of February. Love. <laughs> we're still a little. Oh my gosh, this is working my nerve because I can see that we're we can glitchy. see that we're glitchy. Hmm. But we apologize for the system and the network and the techie issues. We don't. Mm, I guess what's that mean? I need a faster internet or mm, maybe is that what that means maybe so i don't know hmm. oh well i don't know it is what it is it is what it is it is what it is my mama says hello hey mama love you so we're gonna ask as you're joining please share the live on your share. page and we can invite others to come on as we want as many people on as possible so that they can yes. hear this beautiful Love story is going to be told in just a few minutes. We're excited. We are excited. We're just um, waiting for some, you know, I had a lot of people tell me they was going on tonight now. Yeah, we're a little, we be a little bit going a little early. We, yeah, yeah. we've we been minutes. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's 7.02 now. So we're so. going to, um, do you want to wait a minute? And do so. what? They can catch the replay. They, they sure can. <laughs> And sure can rewind it. Catch the replay. Oh, you're right, because we want to time schedule, so we want to go ahead and get started. Well, we want to try to be, you know, mindful, and then, yeah. you know, they can always catch it at their leisure. Yes, yes, yes. They can do that. So, yes. okay. I'll pray. Yes, ma'am. It's your turn. All right, Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, Father, it's once again that we come before you, God. First and foremost, God, we're just so grateful. Father, we're grateful for another day. We're grateful for another opportunity of God. We thank you for another live on tonight, of, of, and that's the kind of God we serve. We thank you, oh God, that we're still able to give you glory and honor and praise oh, in spite yes. of everything that's going on in this world, in this country, in our lives, God. We can still give you praise. We can still give you honor. We can still give you glory because you are truly mm -hmm. worthy of it all you deserve 
oh God, every hallelujah that we have, you deserve it, oh God. So we just thank you for that, Lord. And Father, we pray for tonight. We pray, oh God, for those that will be listening, that they will be encouraged, they will be uplifted. God, we pray, oh God, that somebody will gain some knowledge, oh God. And God, we pray, oh God, for our guests that are coming. We pray for blessings upon their lives. We pray, oh God, that you will increase them in their ministry, oh God, and in their home and in their family. Father, we just pray that you'll have your way on tonight, God. God, we come against any hindering spirits or any issues with the technology or with social media or with zoom god god we we know about that you are in control of yes, god and father lord. we're just praying for smooth sailing from this point on mm-hmm. god we're so grateful to you god we love you on tonight and we give you our glory honor praise and we thank you for all things in jesus name we pray amen amen and our scripture as always psalms 105 and 1 give thanks to the lord and proclaim his greatness let the whole world know what he has done amen amen Amen. give thanks to the lord that's what we're here to do give thanks to the lord oh my goodness so So testimony do y'all remember on last week Remember? Y'all may or may not remember on mm-hmm. last week when I said, when I come back on Monday. You sure did. I will tell you. You said that at your mouth. I did, didn't I say that you at my mouth? You that, honey. You Words sure power. did. I said, when I come back on next Monday, I'm going to tell you how God raised my brother up that he was not going to be on the ventilator. You said that. And he was off the ventilator on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two days after I said that he was going to be off the ventilator. He's off the ventilator. He's in a regular room. I don't I see you. Oxygen levels up to like 97, 98%. Look at he's up walking around. He's sitting up. He's talking. He's eating. Mm. He's cutting up, cracking looks. And first and foremost, he's giving God praise, the honor, and the glory. Yeah, I'm gonna let him tell his own testimony, but I'm just gonna tell you how grateful I am mm. for what God mm. did for him and how God raised him up. God is a good God. Yes, yes he, he is. is. Yes, he is. And he was singing a song on my way home. Wow. He said, I can't think of that song. He said, what is it? He said, he said something about fixing Jesus. And I looked it up and that's what he was singing on my yeah. way home. He fixed it. He said, Jesus fixed it. I said, yes, mm. boy, yes, he did. Mm. So mm. we're just giving God glory and honor. That is my testimony for this week. I'm just grateful to God that he spared my brother's life. I really am and the testimony that's going to come out of this and i believe i was going to be saved i mean i was going to be changed yeah. because of what god did what god did i mean he was on the later only for um a little over a week okay yeah yeah like a week and two days maybe mm-hmm. yeah but you know he went through a lot in that little bit of time but god is restoring him yes, yes. and we're just grateful for that so that's it for me for you this said week. that I, that is you know I this believe is the it. thing you we believe. pray and we yeah. believe and we ask God and we're still Amazed. so excited to hear when God Amazed. actually do yes. what we ask we're him to do hey yes. sister Gina happy hey, birthday Gina. oh yeah happy birthday yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh a testimony y'all I'm just grateful for life I am um, I'm grateful for breath and I'm grateful for a paycheck. <laughs> How about that? Oh my goodness. Sometimes you have jobs and you just don't know what, um, you know, they put those in other duties as a sign. Mm-hmm. And that, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just not a fan of that little caveat. Like, just tell me point blank, plain, simple, what I got, to, what am I here for? How do I get this check? <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so we were thrown um and it was it was okay because it was all about helping people and you know so i'm all about that any day um all day every day i'll help you know anybody but um it was not that i'm a big super bowl fan and i'm not really a, a real football fan though i do support the ravens because they wear my favorite color purple <laughs> and they're local and they're local <laughs> um Oh, I worked all weekend, like for real. I worked all day Saturday and um from like 12 to 12.45, oh, almost 7, 6, 15, something. Oh, on wow. Sunday, wow. I worked a whole seven days a week. But um, one, I, I 
pray I don't have to do that much. And I'm spoiled. I get it why when you go other places, people be like, y'all Americans are spoiled. <laughs> don't get me where I do, but you know, I've worked a long time. Listen to me. I worked a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I got some, some juice. I'm ready to retire. Hey, I'm ready. I've been ready to retire. I've been tired and tired again. Retired. Okay. <laughs> ready to retire <laughs> yes. but um but I, I do i do love helping people i do love what i do and though it was a lot of work and it was long i am grateful for my co-workers we got through together we supported each other mm -hmm. and so you know it's important to be the light where you are mm -hmm. because yes. you know you wonder why why am i always the only christian on my job or why am i always you know the odd man out you're there for a purpose and you're there to be the light so someone can see the light and know that the light exists mm -hmm. and you know we win people love and kindness we we win people by helping each other we win people by being concerned mm -hmm. and and caring for each other right. you know right yes we show those in the household of faith a special kind of love mm -hmm. but we got to love everybody love thy neighbor mm -hmm as yes. thyself mm -hmm. yes. so love yourself and then go love your neighbor mm -hmm. you know and you really do you know love others better when you love yourself Amen. that's true um you really can't give what you don't have Mm. um so you can't pull from an empty well yeah, and go try yeah. to water somebody else yeah you'll both be dry right so right. um water yourself take care of yourself you know get your rest eat like you're supposed to eat you know do what you're supposed to do for you mm -hmm. and you will be better and more equipped to help somebody else mm -hmm. so even when i completed my assignment when i was done doing my piece i stayed on to help my coworkers. wow um because this, we need each other mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. you, you never know what what you are going to be the catalyst for mm -hmm. and what god is using you for so that's my testimony. I Amen. work, but I'm right before a job. I know, <laughs> <that's, check. laughs> I know that's right. I guess I know it can get frustrating, but we're still grateful that we got paychecks. Mm -hmm. God is what he, you know, kept us and provided for us mm -hmm. in the midst of everything. He is such a good guy. And that's the kind of guy we serve. And that's yep, the kind of guy Jeez. we serve. Jeez. You know, he, God. yes, he is. Uh, yes, he is. He woo. really is. Mm -mm -mm. Always, you know, this blows our minds mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. you know and you think about how when you just think about when you literally think of the goodness of jesus and all he oh. has done for you i don't know how your soul don't cry out hallelujah like you just don't have any choice it's it almost like you get a can't help it I, yeah I, it just, Ooh, you ah, have to say ah. hallelujah like Ooh, you geez. have to say thank you jesus Ooh, you have Ooh. to praise yes, you Lord. think uh. when you think you take a moment to mm -hmm. think and that's why the enemy keeps us busy mm -hmm. okay. that's why the enemy try to keep us busy all the time because so we don't have a moment to, to think, think. Uh, if he can bombard us with uh, life and bombard us with everything i'm oh. trying to stop i think of the goodness of jesus oh, <laughs> but, <laughs> about the lord but you can't help it mm -hmm. you literally cannot help it when you're like god did that your hands up yes. like tell your face up for two minutes and be like oh my god God, you did that and you, did, you you just become grateful when you really sit down and think about it and that's you know i'm telling you deep god has given us everything we need to be successful yes he has and everything we need to overcome yes. and everything we need to prosper god has given it to us yes so i'm telling you that's why the enemy fight us all kinds of crazy ways but if we just take a moment mm-hmm Mm -hmm. God has got us, mm -hmm. you know, yep. in the so. palm of his hand. He's got the whole world in his hands. <laughs> she was come in and finish that. Oh, I was. Oh, uh, we, 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 that's how we flow. Oh, that is how we do. I, use, I usually do jump in, though. I'm really good. She's I'm, slipping. I'm, I'm, no, I'm messing. I know, worked me. all week long. Oh, I worked seven oh, days a week long. I'm messing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, y'all don't okay. pay us no mind. Okay, we just being ourselves. Y'all so. know y'all love us. Y'all be family, right? Y'all love us, right? Yes, we right. act the fool around y'all. All right, that's right. If y'all don't, if you know what, if you can't laugh and enjoy your life, mm. take a minute, think about it. <laughs> think about where you Rethink could be. Because some things mm. are funny. 
especially with church folk, we funny people. Mm-hmm. You know, right. we, we are comical mm-hmm. people. I mean, our father is funny. You know, mm-hmm. he's talking about putting a camel through the eye of a needle. If that ain't funny, <laughs> and you know, I want to see it. <laughs> I want to be like, hmm. <laughs> things that make you go, hmm. <laughs> And our kids are funny. And our kids are funny. They are hilarious. Y'all never seen church kids mock us grown folks? Church kids are the funniest. They make the best oh. comedians, though. You they think do. about comedians, the ones that are like really funny? Yes. They think we, they started with church jokes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Even Steve Harvey talked about Sister Odell. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ain't heard about Sister Odell? Oh, my goodness. She, yes. about, she was his yes. favorite saint because mm-hmm. <laughs> for his own reasons. But, you know, Look, oh boy, we're laughing through our pain yes. and everything. We be laughing yes. through the tearing and get through sometimes, boy. Ooh, okay, Praise so the Lord. So, are y'all ready? We're gonna get into our show on tonight. Listen, I love that show episode, whatever you want to call it. 20, 23? 23. 20, wait, wait a minute. Is that right? Is that how y'all see it? 23? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see it in a minute. So we're going to bring on our guests. We have Pastors William and Ebony Scarborough from Salisbury, Maryland. We're going to get ready to bring them in. Let's bring them on. And we're going to hear their beautiful testimony on tonight. Yes. Thank you. You remember. <laughs> she playing me now. She's playing me off. Mm. No, no, I'm not even going to get into it. Let me bring our guests in. You don't want you to No. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, Carrie's watching. Hi, Carrie. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back. This is welcome back. Right. So they don't know. They don't know yeah. you were here before. <laughs> welcome, welcome, pastors. William and Ebony Scarborough. We appreciate you guys for coming yes. and sharing. Um, tonight, so we um, want to give you an opportunity to, uh, to introduce yourselves to mm-hmm. the audience that's watching, and then we'll get into a little bit of Q, Q&A. Q&A, yes. Okay. All right, we are William and Ebony Scarborough. We, um, we're pastors, life coaches, um, relationship advisors. Uh, we have been married for 16 years. Yeah, 16 years. <laughs> that's I know it. <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah. we we pretty much just we grew up together and I really she's she's my best friend and I just enjoy oh. spending time with her. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so best friends. When when did y'all first meet? <laughs> I that met him. <laughs> I met him at school. So um he is two years older than me. So we were in high school together, but of course he was older than me, but I was friends with his cousin. Uh-huh. And that's how I met him. Um, Cause I would always go to his cousin's house and stuff like that. And then like, he oh. would be there. And I'm like, I, and to be honest, I did not like him at first. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. I did not like him. I was just it like- It was the same here. I was like, who is this dude? Like, <laughs> he is so, you know, confident he's so like what what who is this dude and um so like we did not we did not um get along at first so this was high school we did not get along at first what mm-hmm. really was what I think was happening was uh underneath I did like him yeah but you know just yeah, I remember the very first interaction we had we were at my um my grandfather's church, we were standing outside on the church step. It was a group of us young people there. And at the time, I, I was 16, I think I was. Was I? No, 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 I wasn't 16. I was like 18, 19, something right around there. And um, I was the youth leader at that time. And I remember like my cousin, she was a part of the group and she came to the church just to visit. And we were all just standing out there in the group talking. And before I knew it, it was just the two of us standing there. And I think I had led you to Christ that night. He ended up leading me to Christ that night. Yeah. I was like, night. even though I don't know you, I know you know <laughs> Jesus. So, <laughs> Cause at, at the time, like I, I was real, my whole like high school career, if you want to call it, like I was in Bible study. I had Bible study groups. I was leading 
and like youth groups, all kinds of stuff in high school. And that was kind of like, I was in Christ real heavy at a very young age. I think I got saved when I was 16 years old. And wow. it just, hold on, I'm my phone all over the place. <laughs> oh, you're fine. And, That's um, good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I just remember that night specifically, we, uh, I led her to Christ and that's kind of, that was my first interaction with her. She has seen me several times, but that was the first time I actually interacted with her. Oh my yeah. goodness. That is beautiful. Oh, I love oh, that. You know what I did? I remember now when you said it, I remember you telling us telling us that back some months ago, some years ago. Oh my gosh, that is just, oh, that yeah. gave me chills. Oh, that is <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Mm, to, mm, wow <laughs> i love that story like you literally led your didn't know them but Future that life. life to christ yeah yeah, right. yeah. So now so and, and, you, and so not knowing you, like how go ahead go, go ahead. ahead i'm sorry no 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 i was, asking no, I was just gonna you. say I, it's a little delay go ahead go ahead go ahead, go ahead. you go ahead go you you go ahead <laughs> all right here we go here we go so i, I just remember like during that time because I, I think we really had a strong group of young people at the time and when she got saved it was i think he was like number 10 at the time or something like that right. and like like because we all went to high school back when it was chicken fans and all that stuff <laughs> and uh <laughs> But it was just, we kind of developed like a group of young when we really like went and been in high school and just started making disciples. And it was just, it was like at that time, that's where our mind was and what we were about. And I can't tell you the countless amount of young people that we really impacted and got saved during that, during that save making like the three years that I like it was it was real good it was a real good time it was real good oh my goodness that is awesome nice so I was gonna ask when you led her to Christ where was that your and I'm not and I hope you don't take this the wrong way <laughs> when you led her to Christ was that your main focus or were you interested in her then even then good question uh -huh. hey, I didn't like her either <laughs> <laughs> it was it, it, during the time like I I just I don't know it was weird I I really did not like her as as a per I just didn't like her but at the time I knew my call was to be a witness so it was like I we got to talking and it was like immediately we started gelling as far as conversation was concerned and it, it, I can't I, I don't remember how it happened but it was like everybody kind of veered off and it was just her and I standing there. And that's where the conversation led. And it was like, at that time, I only viewed her as a friend. I never viewed her as, you know, this is a person I want to be in a relationship with. And okay. her, I'm gonna, this is going to sound crazy, but it was like her devotion to Christ deterred me because it's like, she was real like eager and was like hungry. And she was coming to me for questions. And I'm like, can you please stop bothering me? Leave me alone. My job is to leave you. Now you go find somebody else. <laughs> I know that sounds bad. <laughs> I, was, I was a teenager, you know, but it was because, and it was only because of the fact like she was hungry and I didn't have what she needed to feed her. So I was always trying to pass her off to somebody else. And, and wow. even to go along with that, like, I wasn't thinking about a relationship at that time. I was 17. Um, mm -hmm. I was not thinking about, and we all know, listen, the old folks say, you know, uh, I won't say the older folks, but, you know, those that have gone before us, you know, when you get saved, they're not, it's not usually taught in the church how to properly date, how to, you know, court someone yep. and, all of that stuff it's not you it, when, when we came up it was just like, like you're 18 17 like just don't do it you know what i mean right. like you just need to right. you know keep your flesh under control and all mm -hmm. of that kind of stuff and like I wasn't, I wasn't even thinking about no relationship and frankly some of the and i'm not gonna be honest frankly some of the things that you know we were taught and exposed to kind of deterred me from even thinking that way anyway 
So mm-hmm. when right. I started to, um, and it's unfortunate, you know, which is, this is mm-hmm. all why we do what we do um, that mm-hmm. ties into our why. Um, so when we find, when I started having these feelings for him, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's just my flesh. I'm fasting and praying, like trying to, like, oh no, like this is just, this is just my flesh. I and mean, I can't, I can't oh go to this room. Um, but to make a very long story short, I ended up talking to my pastor at the time and he was like, you know, I really feel like, you know, you guys would make a great um, couple. And I was like, couple? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Pastor. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I I gave him a chance. I gave him a chance. And this is your side of the story, right? It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the side we go on with. <laughs> I, get, I gave him a chance. Um, we, his mom actually kind of saw that little spark too within us. And, um, you know, we started dating and <clears> now <throat> listen, where we came from, there was group mm-hmm. dating. Okay. <laughs> it, you said before you get to that, I, re- I remember specifically even with myself, like it was probably two years, probably two years after the initial conversation that we had, as far as leading her to Christ, that we actually, I started developing feelings and I, I knew I was developing feelings because it was like my hatred towards her got stronger and I was like <laughs> I, I, I it doesn't make sense but it was like I knew it, it's, it's it's that way of kind of hiding how you really feel mm-hmm. you know you're yeah. expressing yeah. one thing hiding, you know concealing another and yeah. I knew within my heart like, you know you know I, I just started noticing her and I remember my um, it was my, my uncle, my pastor at the same time. I went on him, I went to him on a separate occasion, not knowing that she talked to him. And I was like, man, you know, I've been out here saving souls for the last three or four years. I never had these feelings, never had these thoughts. Like I really like her. And he never told me how, you know, she had came to him prior to. And mm-hmm. uh and he kind of played me. He was like, well, you know, let's just see where it goes. You know, maybe you guys can, you know, talk or whatever the point. So I think it was, we had a dinner at my mom's house and she ended up, I invited her over and we went outside and was sitting on the step. And at the time, like I was real shy and nervous. So all mm. the time. <laughs> so it was like, I, I wanted to tell her how I felt, but I couldn't, but I was like, you know what? I really feel like I want you to, I just came out with it. I was like, I really feel like I want you to be, you know, my wife. And she was like, I feel the same way. And it just went from there. So you all weren't even dating at the time? No. Mm-mm. What? No, we, now, granted, we still dated. Like, we took that. Yeah, yeah, we took the time to date after that. Right. Afterwards to date. Yeah, but it was kind of like. Because at the at the time, I'm sorry, I mean, that's right. I was gonna say at the time, like our minds were so focused on, like Paul said, we just wanted to preach the gospel. We just wanted to, you know, share the gospel with you. And that's like where our mind was. So to me, this was a distraction. <laughs> you know what I mean? But <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's just where we were. So yeah, so that's you know, but that's that's pretty much our foundation. And I will say that um, you know, it's it's been 16 years that we're together, and I would not regret any of no. our foundation because mm-hmm. our foundation started in God. Yeah, wow. um, yeah. I try to encourage people. I try to, and, and we're not perfect by any means, but I try to encourage people to marry somebody who loves God just as much, if not more than you do. Yeah. Yes. Um, and yes. I say that because our foundation was in God. That is what, that is what has sustained us throughout these years Mm -hmm. our relationship not just to each other but our relationship with God um and that really has been our lifeboat I don't mean to make it like super deep or anything like that but in our worst moments with each other it's been Mm -hmm. our relationship with God that has sustained us I gotta get my kids. I'm, I'm sorry, our <laughs> children are knocking at the door. This this is a busy oh, house. That's fine. Um, <laughs> you can see. No life. That's it's okay. Always busy. Um, but it really has been. Um, oh look, Brene is on here. She said, "Yeah, hey, you're on." Yeah. 
the beginning. Yes, Renee, you remember us from the beginning. So it really uh, is, as we, you know, as we said, it was all about God um, in the beginning. And I just encourage people that even when you're seeking for a spouse, if you know that, you know, that is the, the, I knew my relationship with God. I knew what I wanted. I knew I was young, but I knew the direction that I was heading. And mm -hmm. um, so that was where, that was our foundation. So I tell people all the time, you know, marry somebody who loves God just as much, if not more than yeah. you do. We counsel way yeah. too many couples who um, one person <clears throat> really loves God and, and wants to serve God and the, uh, they end up marrying and that person just the well he'll get saved or she'll get saved yeah. you know one day or whatever and then you know you're a couple years down the road and it's you know you go through so much frustration and it's like you can't make that person change they have to want God for themselves so yeah. right. this is why I say I'm so thankful that that has been our foundation yeah. because um, I'm not going to get into this part of the story but even how we both came to Christ like it was one of those things like for me there was no turning back you know what i mean the way god saved me it was like there's no turning back so i'm just grateful mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. nice so i, I want to ask one quick question <laughs> pastor ebony how did you feel when he said to you i believe that you're my wife or god wants me to marry you or whatever yeah how did you feel it was confirmation it was confirmation um i knew that he was the one how do you know i because i ain't hate you no more i love how god didn't do a love hate uh, he did a hate love. <laughs> right <laughs> right um so yeah i knew he was i knew he was the one it was confirmation for me um and it was it was really I was relieved to know that he felt the same way that I felt about him um, at this time. And then it was, again, like I said, it was really cloudy. The cloudiness came in because we didn't have a lot of guidance. It wasn't a lot of, it, it, was, it was very just, you know, I'm not gonna go into it, but it, we didn't have a lot of guidance. Yeah, I guess they, it, and the so, story once we got married was- Yeah, so yeah. I just think that, um, I think that again, this is why we do what we do yeah. um, to really help guide couples throughout that process as well. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's how I knew he was the one. I just, mm -hmm. I just knew it in my heart. Um, again, I was young; I was eighteen, so I cannot sit there and say like, "Oh my gosh!" Like I could just see all of our future together. I was scared to death. <laughs> <I'm> sure. <laughs> <laughs> to death but um looking back at it now i say that the lord had a purpose the whole time mm -hmm. um he just needed two girls that were willing to obey um mm -hmm. and so yeah and you know it's is he's been this has been an amazing journey it has not always been peaches and cream it has not always been um on mountaintops experiences but i was thinking about something the other day and i told him i was just like i'm so thankful that uh, you are, you're my person. You're my everything. I'm so thankful. Uh, and it's just, it's not the big stuff. It's the small stuff of him being, and I know, I know y'all got questions, so I'm just gonna. She touched my heart. Right there. Oh, hold on. Hold on oh my Go gosh. He's so, he's so extra. It's the small things to me of just being what I'm not. You know, recognizing his strengths and my weaknesses, my weaknesses and his strengths, and really being able to lean and depend on that in a person um, and being able to be completely vulnerable and say, hey, I am so weak in this area, but you are so mm -hmm. strong in this area. And I am so thankful you are my person and um, just you go forth and be great and be strong in this area so I you know it's just it's just the little things that and I was just thinking about that the other day so it's it's just a little thing that's awesome so was the official first date the dinner at your mom's or did you all have an another official first date no you know I had to ramp it up I had an official first date like two days later there oh, was okay. um this this restaurant who was it? Angelo's. Angelo's and Angelo's. Fruitland. They're they're not there anymore. Oh, 
But y'all like, remember Angelos and Fruitland? I remember where um, I do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, go to your sister. Um, in a, in an Italian place, and he, yeah. he took me there. That was like one of our few. Yeah, man. When we went, we always went with like a group of people. Not that time though. I don't think that time we did. We didn't. I don't. I don't think so. I'm sorry, my toddler is all over the all place. All over the place. <laughs> but, um, okay. I don't think we. I don't. I don't remember going. I, don't, with, I, I don't, think you're right. It was just us. Yeah, but I. But most of the other dates was just like. And I, I, you know, I had a really nice paying job at the time, so I was trying to impress her by having her get the the big meals and all that stuff. And I think that <laughs> just that initial date, it was uh, so crazy. <laughs> no, nah, just that initial date, like it was. It was different because I always saw her as a friend. And during that time, like where our minds were, to see her as a love, you know, a potential lover, it was it was kind of it was weird for me because I never really pursued a relationship, you know, during that time period. So it was kind of different. And I was a I was just a nerd out of this world. <laughs> By that he means he was very shy. I was very shy. Very shy. I was very okay. confident but shy. Okay. When it came to me. Yeah. Confident when it came to everybody else. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that's our foundation story. That's that's just, you know where we started out and um we've just been growing ever since. So when you first started noticing each other and stopped hating each other, what is one of the first things you noticed about each other that was like, hmm. For me, oh, you want me to say that? Okay. <laughs> For me, I don't know what he's about to say. I know what I'm. Gonna say. <laughs> I have no idea what's gonna come out of his mouth. For me, it was his smile. Um, his smile is contagious. He just walks in the room, and his smile is just it's infectious. You don't have a choice but to. Um, give in to it so for me that's that's what it was once i stopped hating him i was able to see his smile um and just his um bubbly personality everything is funnier with him i told him that the other day i was like everything is so much funnier with you around <laughs> um, it, it just is and it's one of the things that i love about him you know he just oh, he's on fire. sorry yeah, our, our toddler is. It's, he's all over. The, I'm all, sorry. He's all over the place. Okay. Oh, we oh, understand. Oh, this is fine. We understand. We're totally. to prevent an injury right now. Because <laughs> toddlers are, yes, injury blink prone. Of, blink of an eye. Right. Don't blink. <laughs> I would say for me, the thing that I, I always uh, recognized in her prior to was her loyalty. And that was something that. I kind of picked up on but then it was like when my feelings began to change it was her figure i was like i told you i did not know what you were gonna say I and like, like i say I'm, 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 sorry. I'm sorry it was your loyalty that's what i was gonna say <laughs> he was loyal that's what he said loyal with you figure what's wrong with that he was a a loyal I didn't know what this man was gonna say. I'm, I'm being, I'm being completely honest, and it was, it, yeah. it was like when I, that I mean, because I like I've, I've been around her, but I never really mm -hmm. looked at her. But then it was like when I really started having feelings for her, then I really began to look at her, and I was like, wow, this girl is beautiful. And then mm -hmm. it was like I started building from there. I wow. told you I knew what he was gonna say. That was a loaded question. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. So there is for so sidebar for for uh, men generally, there really is a whole physical attraction that comes along with like I see you before I really kind of see you inside. I see you. Yeah. I think we you. Have, you know sometimes we sanctify it up so much, yeah. but the reality is when you see a person like you before you even know any of their characteristics what draws you yeah. to that person is whether or not you're attracted to them right that's um, not true so I, I don't care i don't buy into the hype of you know 
their looks will grow on you over time. No, I got to like what I see. Um, <laughs> that's just, I don't know. I think sometimes we, we just make it more than what it is and make it yeah. deeper than what it is. At the end of the day, you want to be attracted to the person that you are laying down with every night, that you are waking up to every night, um, every morning um, that you see, like, that's just, you know, we make it more than what it is, but because it, because I mean, because like I said, the thing was, we did ministry together for like two or three years, so it was like mm-hmm. I actually got to know her as a person, and I really begin to see, and like I said, the the main thing that stuck up to me was her loyalty and how she was loyal to God, regardless to what. Because at the time, like we had a lot of haters, and it was a whole bunch of stuff, oh, but. I'm sure. Yeah, but it was like, that's what I really saw was like, regardless to what happened, she stayed loyal to her calls. And then like, I began to see other attributes of her and so on and so forth. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, and and, because at that time, I really felt like before, (laughs) before I knew her or got to know her, I actually knew her, if that makes sense, because of the time that we spent prior to not even knowing it was building for something better. So. Mm -hmm. So I know you guys say you hated each other, but were were you each other's type? Mm. Were you each other, like, are you, were you generally attracted to tall, dark, and handsome? Were you generally attracted to, you know, <laughs> shorter, <laughs> you know, shapely, you know? I, I got my answer. Here. I want to see what she has there. I, I guess our story is a little bit different because I was 18. I didn't know I had a type. You know what I mean? Okay. I know I, that may I know that may not be um, most people's answer because they're you know older or you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. able to. I'm sorry. As we're talking, our toddlers just sure. spinning water. Yeah. <laughs> um. So this is an interesting uh. interview. Uh. So <laughs> what I, I will say that um I didn't necessarily realize I had a type. However, um. I feel like everything that I, I've needed throughout these 16 years, I have found in him. Um, I'm 16 years later, I'm still physically attracted to my husband. Um, I'm still so, and I say all that to say, you know, to each his own, but sometimes you got to lay down your type to, so God can give you what you need. Mm-hmm. And yeah, if you get that, you will still be attracted to, to that person. So, um, be 16 years like i said i'm still physically attracted to my husband i am still uh, hence we got four kids um (laughs) (laughs) so uh yeah i can't necessarily say that i had a type per se but he definitely was attracted to me i'll say i i i was 20 so i kind of was coming into myself a little bit and Mm -hmm. I can't say that I had a necessary uh, like a type, but I was more so attracted to personalities, you know, and mm-hmm. I really felt like with her, I was attracted to her personality. And it's kind of weird because and she knows I said this many times before, but she was kind of like quirky and kind of just and I still am. she she was I, the word I used then was she was weird. <laughs> I was not weird. But, I, but I'm saying you weren't <laughs> weird, but that was the best way at that time that she I could describe it. I thought you were weird too. So. Yeah, and it was like, I loved like her personality. It was just like, she was just different. And that's what kind of made that attraction even that much more, you know, because mm-hmm. she was different from what I had already, you know, what I experienced or people that I've, you know, experienced before. So she was just different. Right. So you guys went into mar- into dating with the end game of, of marriage. Like you literally started dating saying, I believe you are the one I'm going to marry. So how long did was your dating process? It was, it was a year. A year, a year, year and a half. And married. Yeah, a year yeah. and a half. Okay. okay. Year and a half. What? Again, I, you know, I tell people all the time, I understand it. This is not, our story is unique and unusual. I say unusual, yeah. unusual for the time that we live in. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, but even though that was our story, I still would tell people today 
that if you know you're ready to settle down, you're ready to be married, you're ready to take that next step, then you should be dating with a purpose. Okay. Um, not just be like, oh, I'm just randomly dating people. Like, no, you should be dating to see if this person has potential to yeah. be the one. Um, not just, you know, freely just doing whatever just because to have companionship or, you know, especially with Valentine's Day coming up and all of that kind of stuff. Like we should be, when we're, when you're ready to start settling down, you know, you're ready to um, enter into that next phase of your life. You should be dating with a purpose. Although our story is unique and it's different. Yeah. Um, and it's not most people's story. The, the theme is still the same. Um, date with a purpose date with the intention to see if that person um has that potential to possibly mm -hmm. right okay so now that you so said you've been married for 16 years you have four kids now mm -hmm. and we know and i've never been married but i've seen i was seen my mother and father raise five kids and i've seen other marriages and i know that sometimes we can get carried away with raising the kids, going to work, making sure food is done, clothes washed, house clean, you know, taking care of the bills. How do you keep the romance in your marriage with all of that going on? I can answer that. Okay. Um, what you got to say? Because I don't know. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna say anything crazy. Sometimes I can be a loose man and I can be completely honest with you. Um, I, I think uh, the, the way we do it is we keep, uh, we just keep each other first. Like we do get caught up in sometimes in the mundane of raising kids and so on and so forth. But what we try to do is to be intentional about spending time with each other. We, uh, mm -hmm. especially during the quarantine, started doing uh, uh, date nights on Sunday. What were we doing good before? We were doing good, but it was like yeah. since quarantine, we actually like schedule it and really make it a thing. And it's like awesome. we intentionally make sure that we have that quality time because her love language is quality time mm -hmm. and mine is physical touch. So it's like we try to make sure we take that time and intentionally meet each other's need in our language. So, mm -hmm. and there are times where, you know, like you said, raising kids, it could be a lot. And there has been moments where that's where most of our attention would go to. But it's like once we come to ourselves, it's like, hey, we got to regroup and, and think this thing over and really get back to the, to the center refocus. And it's not just kids. You know, we have ministry. We have business. We both yeah. work full right. time. So it's a lot pulling at our attention. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. like he said, keeping each other's first has to be intentional. And I tell you, know, this is where the work comes in. It's not, it's not always like you don't wake up every day, like so in love and, you know, just falling over in love and butterflies on your stomach every day. Um, if you, you know, if you do, then tell me your secret. So, <laughs> um, but this is where the work comes in and this is where, you know, we work. I, and I think we both agree. Like, I never want to just be able to say we have a long lasting marriage. I want to be able mm -hmm. to say that we have we have a long lasting marriage and we're still in love we still put in the work we still put in the time to make each other like he said first in our lives i know people who've been married 30 40 years or whatever but still can't stand each other and like i don't want to be that person and i think we yeah. decided long ago if we're going to get married young like we're going to put in the work to right. have a successful marriage and that means um like he said, the, the date nights that we have. And since quarantine, it's really been a challenge to yeah. be intentional about those date nights. But for, for us, what that looks like is a lot of times our older children will watch the baby. Well, I mean, we're still okay. in the house. Um, and okay. we can date right in our room. Like, you know, we pick a different theme and all of that. And we have like date night in our room, whether it's a dinner theater, game night. So, you know, whatever it is, like right in our room and our kids know for two hours, don't bother us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, sometimes we pay them their little brother or whatever. So you really have to get um, creative and intentional Mm -hmm. about meeting each other's needs so yeah it 
this is where the work comes in. It doesn't mm-hmm. success for marriages don't just happen. Right. You have to put right. in that work. And there mm-hmm. are times that we could make an excuse to say, you know, we're tired. We we just don't feel like it tonight or whatever, but it's like now. Because if you keep if this week you'll be Sorry. tired, next week you'll Sorry. be tired, the week after that you'll be tired, all of that, you know, kind of comes yeah. into play. So right. that's pretty much again, that's Carter, but that's pretty much how we keep the romance alive in our relationship by um by being intentional about it. It does not just happen. Um, yeah, I wish, yeah. I wish I could say it did, but it doesn't. Like you got to put in, you got to put in the work. Yeah, yeah, sure. yes. What was the, I didn't get a chance to answer the last question. That was the question. Like, how do you keep the romance? No, before that, was it about dating? I'm not sure. I can't remember. Anyway, good. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. I think we were talking about how long. Um, yeah, you did answer yeah, about yeah. how long did you date before? Um, you got married before marriage. I think eighteen. You said it was a year and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. then you brought up date nights. That's so. That is, date nights are so important, right? You got to be able to connect, right? So what are what are you all's favorite date nights? So, I mean, because they might be the same, they might be different, but your most memorable date night. Tell us about your most memorable date night. Or, I mean, it could be the same, Not could be different. Memorable, but I will share the one that is appropriate. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> family, family. <laughs> um, I'm going to start a sweating. <laughs> He's so interesting. Uh, I'll say we don't know where it ended up. We just want to know, you know, what the theme was or what you know. I got it. No, I, I would say for myself, I think uh one of the ones that really uh that I loved the most was we had like um it was like uh I tried to set up like a picnic almost, but I, I kind of failed because I knew my wife wasn't getting in the floor. So I was, I had to rearrange it and set up like we watched a movie in the park and um, I had my MacBook set up and rather than watch it on the TV, we set it up, had like um, a little, what was it like a fireplace going on the TV? Yeah, it was like a fireplace going on the TV. And we kind of set it up where, you know, we were just like at a park watching a movie and it was, it was pretty cool. And we ended up talking for quite a bit of time afterwards yeah because i was not sitting there for his, he his kn- child i'm sorry he he knew he knew yeah it was a nice thought but floral and me not gonna work um <laughs> the lord made chair you gotta, you gotta get up you gotta get up off the That's floor at some it. point <laughs> and the lord made chairs he wants me to sit in chairs <laughs> so exactly. yeah that's um I was gonna say the same thing. I just remember, um, I just remember how I felt. For me, it does not take a lot to please me. It's all about effort. It's all about effort. And so the amount of effort that he took, um, although it was a very simple date night, it was very, I just remember how I felt. I felt very appreciated. I felt seen, I felt noticed in the midst of everything like we talked about that's pulling at our attention. Like I was, just, I just yeah. felt so important. Um, and I was like, yes, this, like, this is it. I could sit here forever. Um, mm-hmm. so I, I agree. I, I didn't realize that was going to be his, but that is also my, oh, really? How it about? was, <laughs> that was also oh, my, good job. <laughs> yeah, good job. <laughs> so I want to rewind a little bit. I know we're, we're into your marriage, but before, okay. So I know you were young. Y'all were both young when you got married, but did did you have an expectation of oh, what yes. of what marriage looked like and then once you were married did you realize that you had unrealistic expectations yes, <laughs> yes. yes. i love that you question uh i can say for me um so my mom what i saw coming up like my mom she was married for a portion of my childhood but um then she, you know, like later on divorced and got married again after I was already married and all of that. But I, I just knew like from what I I thought marriage was, was like the wife taking care of, um, you know, traditional gender roles, taking care of this, taking care of that. The husband's supposed to 
take care of this and Carter is literally I'm jumping, sorry. He's jumping off tables, literally. Um, <laughs> something. Keep him busy. And turn on uh, simple songs, please. So turn on simple songs. Right? So yeah, that was our. That was me. That was my kind of expectation, not realizing. And and another thing, let me go back before yeah. I before I finish that. I also had an expectation that, like I said a while ago, that every day I'm going to feel these butterflies. Every day okay. I'm going to just like, okay. it's going to be like in the movie. You're going to sweep me off my feet every day. Every day you're supposed to make me happy. I tried. You did, but I'm getting to a point here, sir. Um, <laughs> and I had those expectations, but what I realized is that my my expectations, number one, were unrealistic because I was expecting him to constantly make me happy when it's not his job to make me happy. Mm-hmm. It's his okay. job to compliment my happiness. I gotta be already happy. Um, wow. And that, yeah, like that was a shock for me because contrary to popular belief, I'm not always on his mind 24 seven. He got problems, mm-hmm. he got issues, he got a job, he got this, he got that. So to for me to constantly be in this princess syndrome um, that, you know, you're supposed to sweep me off my feet. It left me feeling disappointed. And I'll be honest, like it left me feeling disappointed mm-hmm. because I wasn't happy within myself. And, um, which is something else I try to encourage people, like, you know, putting that weight on your spouse is too much of a weight, um, uh, mm-hmm. for any person to handle, whether it's male or female. You need to take control of your own happiness. Be happiness happy within yourself, and whatever they bring to the table, it's added. Oh my goodness! Wow! Yes. Wow! It's added. You know, mm-hmm. and I I can say I walked through that. I felt you know, I know like I felt disappointed. I felt frustrated. I felt like why you know isn't this happening? Like um, it is not his job. And sometimes God has, he has God-sized voids in us that we expect our spouse to fill. And that's not their responsibility. It's your responsibility to get with God and find out where the deficit is. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is powerful. I would say, I would say for myself, like, I grew up in a household where I had, I had both parents in the house. um, And I actually watched my father do a lot as far as like household things and so on and so forth. And it was like, so when I came in, I already knew like she, I didn't expect her to be like this barefoot naked. Like I, I mean, barefoot and uh, pregnant. Like I, I came in with, I, I knew how to do stuff. And I, my grandfather, he was a mechanic. So I, a lot of stuff I knew how to fix. And I was really like a handyman at a young age. And I, I guess like the only expectation I had of marriage was like, just, I don't know. I don't even really think I had like a high expectation except for just being open and just being happy. I mean, I, that's all I ever wanted was just to be happy, be with somebody that we can share experiences and memories mm-hmm. and stuff together. So it was like, when I came in, I had that expectation. And I really never looked at a woman as, well, you need to be doing this and need to be doing that. It was like, I understood, like, if she decided she didn't want to work, cool, we'll make it work. If she decided she wanted a job, all right, that's even more, you know, that's even better. But it was yeah. like, I never really had that, like, you do this, I do that. It was, we make it work. Mm-hmm. Nice. So communication styles, because communication is huge. Like you can't even have any relationship without being able to communicate. Mm-hmm. Were your communication styles similar? Were they, was it something you had to learn to compromise? And- oh, <laughs> okay. No difference. Okay. Okay. My thing was when I, I kind of, I was not a great communicator. Like my thing was, I kind of held everything in. I suppressed uh-huh. a lot. And when I had issues or problems with her, rather than talk about them, I would just suppress them. And then something would happen 
and all that that I built up would just come out. Mm -hmm. And it was just because in my mind, I didn't want to disappoint her. And I didn't, you know what I mean? It was like, I didn't want to cause any problems. So I thought the best way to not cause problems was to hold it in. And it was Woo! only her because yeah. with her, she's an over communicator. And, not, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's like, she's that one where she wants to talk about it. If this yeah. happened, we want to talk about it right here, right there. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. And there are times where it would take me two or three days before I talk about something. Because my thing was, I, I'm a processor. And yeah. especially with big situations, I would rather take the time to think about how I'm going to respond before I just respond. And there were many situations wow. where I would do that. But then there were times where it needed an immediate reaction. And I was like, I just didn't, you know, that I just didn't communicate well. And I think mm -hmm. early on in our marriage, like that was a big problem was the communication piece. And mm -hmm. it, it's just, I didn't, in my life, I didn't have great communicators. Mm -hmm. And all the, the mar a lot of the marriages that I saw, they really didn't communicate well. So I only emulated what I saw and it really affected us. And that was something that it took us some time and once I finally got to the point where we started talking about, I started really talking about things, that's when a lot of our problems kind of went away. I would say. Nice. Yeah, and for me, I um I I I came up in a household where my, I was raised pretty much by a single mom. My father was in my life, but my mom did the day-to-day -day raising, so she handled it. You know what I mean? Like when you're a single mom, you don't have a choice. You know what I mean? Yep. Mm -hmm. So she handled it. And that's how I came at stuff. Like, we're going to handle this. Like, we need to talk about this. Um, yeah. So, like, we need, to, we need to talk about this. And um, I had to learn a lot when it came to communicating. It was nothing wrong with my technique, per se. But it was nothing wrong with the desire to want to talk about it, but I had to learn to respect his processing time. I had to learn to respect the fact that maybe he needed some space to figure some things out. I had to learn to watch my tone. Um, I had to learn all of that stuff. It is not, um, and I, you know, again, we talk about this all the time in our teachings. Effective communication is a learned behavior. Most people, do not grow up seeing that. Right. So wow. you have to learn it. Again, mm -hmm. this is where the work comes in. Uh, and I, I would say, I would even go as far as to say, I think learning those techniques, um, I believe even saved our marriage, you know, mm -hmm. wow. and got us this far because mm -hmm. you got to learn how to effectively communicate. So both people, when you walk away from the discussion, you walk away with an understanding, like trying to solve the problem and not making each other the problem. Like it's so much right. impact. Um, it's so much into that, that you got to really be work, willing to put in the work and humble yourself because most of us think that we already got it and we're right. Um, I know I did. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why he's not understanding what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, Lord, <you're> <laughs> of course I'm right. I'm, I'm spelling it out. Of course I'm right. How, how else do I need to tell you? How many ways do I need to tell you that I'm right and you're not? Right. <laughs> I don't understand why you're not understanding what I'm saying. And I need to get what I'm saying to you. Just accept <laughs> the fact that I'm right. The sooner yes. you not the fact that I'm right, the easier it is to go for everybody. <laughs> and, and, and even with that point, it was like one thing we had to learn was like, is it is it more important for you in that moment to be right or to be righteous? And it yeah. was like, Whoa. that's where a lot of the challenge came in. Because even with myself, there were a lot of situations where I really felt like I was right. Like I was really, really right. But right. at that moment, is it more important for me to be right? for my own ego or is it more important for me to just bring a, a solution to the problem and that was something that it really took effect because and, and then another thing was when we had to learn how to talk to each other because when it when it seems as though you're talking at me that's even another that's a bigger problem 
you know. So we had to learn to even talk to each other, and I thought that was that was good. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, boy. Woo. right here, right here, right here. <laughs> no, I'm just taking precursor notes. No, <laughs> so many things and so many bells this is going off <laughs> right yes yes because as I, I said uh last week when we, our first episode in the love series that you know i'm a baby and i'm a toddler at this mm -hmm. you know i'm i'm three and a half years in so some of the things where you know Y'all grown from. I'm like, oh, Father <laughs> Jesus, give me help. Lord, is this what it's supposed to be like? When is this going to be over? <laughs> when do we grow up? Like, when do I get the 20 year marriage today? Oh, like, <laughs> can we move past all this drama and can we just get to it today? And I learned that, I mean, I'm learning in the process because it's a process. Lord, it's a process. But I'm learning mm -hmm. that you don't get the beauty of the 20 years without the 20 years. Like you you really right. have to have the time. You have to have the, the ups and the downs yeah. and the struggles and the ebbs and the flows and the rights and the wrongs and the coming to Jesus and the knee bending moments. <laughs> and it's, it's, and honestly, you can look, I can look back over that and see the beauty in it. I didn't see it then. Right. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I didn't see, it. I ain't gonna tell you no story. I didn't see it then. But I can look back in it, at it and see the beauty of it and see how it really made us as individuals mm -hmm. and it made wow. us as a couple um, mm -hmm. because it was those, those, you know, I didn't understand what people used to say, marriage is designed to make you holy. Marriage is designed to be a mirror. I was like, it makes no sense. But the longer I'm in it, the more it makes so much sense right. wow. because like your humility will mm. be tested your servanthood will be yes. tested in marriage your forgiveness is going to be tested in marriage your mm -hmm. um just your dedication and your willingness to go beyond you know your own um i don't know what's the word i'm looking for to go beyond your own i don't know yeah. your own ability yeah mm -hmm. it's all that going mm -hmm. to be tested in a relationship and I can say, like, it, it. I didn't see the beauty of it then, but Lord knows I see the beauty of it now. Yeah. And I would, I would say, too, like, just to add to that, because the, the big thing is that we had to get was we're two different people coming from two different backgrounds yes. that were completely different. Yeah. Even though wow. we had a common denominator, which was Jesus, but it was like, we're just two different people. And mm -hmm. When I understood how much, and this might sound weird, but when I understood how much I love myself, God's requiring me to love her the same way. You know what I mean? Because we're two becoming one and you love your spouse as much as you love yourself. And it was like, when I understood that I need to treat her like I would treat myself, then that's when things really began to change for me in my heart because I had to look at it differently. You know what I mean? Because sometimes we, in which we, at one point, I could say we did, like it was, it became, more of like I, I'm not want to say a competition, but it was like who's who's right, who's better, you know. And, and, and yeah, it's, you know it's what I mean. That, it's that you know when you both have when you have an ego, like yeah. we all got yes. ego and pride and yeah. some, and we all want to be right, you know. <laughs> right. Most people like if you can be honest, most people do not enter an argument without trying to <laughs> wrong the point, right of being right but when it comes to once you begin to grow and you realize it's not necessarily yeah. important that i be right but it's more so that you understand my perspective yeah. and i understand yours then we can move somewhere because yeah, it's all in how you handle each other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. man wow. this is good stuff yeah, good. i love this thank y'all i love this yeah. <laughs> so so now we want y'all to am i missing anything no. Oh, well, yeah, because we're, we're starting to get into the wisdom, more wisdom pieces of it. Yeah. So for each of you, because I like when we did this, I yes. like when we talked about this. So Pastor Ebony, if you would tell us, and we, we want you both to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So you as a wife, tell us one, what women need to know about men, and then tell the men what they need to know about women. And then 
Pastor William, same thing. What men need to know going in, and then what you know, women need to know about men. What women, what women need to know about men, and then what men need to know about women. Gotcha. Okay, so what women need to know about men is mm -hmm. you have to always remember that men have an ego. <sighs> I know it's not, and you need to protect it to a certain extent. Okay. Um, to a certain extent, you need to try to protect it. I know that, you know, we live in a, a world right now that is just like, oh, whatever, we can say whatever, do whatever, everything goes. Mm -hmm. That is not the reality. Um, mm -hmm. Men have an ego. So I have to use my voice with wisdom okay. um even if i write i gotta be careful how i say what i say because once you damage a man once you bruise uh what's the word i'm looking for um masculate yes thank you once masculate. you emasculate, thank you y'all y'all with me <laughs> once you emasculate a man it is hard to build him back up wow it's wow. hard your words have power. And I would encourage anybody, I did not learn this lesson until later on. Um, and it, it made things harder. So you have to remember not to, you know, use your words to emasculate or tear down, but use your words with wisdom. If you want your husband to value your voice, mm -hmm. um, you got to use it with wisdom. It can't be emasculating, tearing down or whatever one day. And then the next day you want to build them up. There's no consistency there. So uh, remember that men have an ego and use your voice wisely. And one thing that men need to know. No, for me. no we, we both have to answer. The oh, both both. Are yeah. gotcha. So mm -hmm. one thing that men need to know about women. Um, hmm. Yeah, I. We just want you. I think that, um, you know, sometimes, and we sent out an email about this today in our, um, if you sub sub subscribe to our email list, um, we sent out an email about this today, that especially this time of year, um, we tried to, he, my husband actually wrote the email and he talked about how he used to try to buy me all these fancy gifts. Don't get me wrong. I still like my gifts, okay? <laughs> Um, <laughs> Hold on. Hear me clearly. Don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, it is not those big gifts on those major holidays that make a marriage. What mm -hmm. makes a marriage is the quality of time that he gives me at night. A lot of times when our children are sleeping and we're having great pillow talk or when he calls me in the morning to make sure that, you know, I, he gets up and leaves from work earlier than I do. So most time he leaves, I'm still asleep. I, I just want, I just want you. That is what makes the marriage for me. Um, mm -hmm. So I think for most women, like I have a job, I can finance myself. I appreciate the extra things. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but there are some things I can't give myself. And that is that quality time that he gives wow. me. Um, wow. So. That's my two cents. Okay. <laughs> I would say for um, what men need to know about women, I would say is women are a direct reflection of us. Mm. And I think it's important That's good. that like what we do, like my wife is, I'm one, I, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of reserved and, you know, set back. My wife is one, she's a go-getter. She goes, and she does things and there's times where like she really shines even though i'm a pastor like my wife she shines she does a lot she does a lot of things and it's like rather than for me to sit back and be in my bag like i push her you know and i'm like babe you know go because i always remember is that she is a part of me and i'm a part of her so whenever she goes up i go up too you know what i mean and it's like i try to be her number one supporter in whatever it is that she does because she is a, a direct reflection of myself. So therefore I have to invest in her things as well so that she can be you know, successful. And I would say um, what women need to know about men, who I would say, 
I don't know. <laughs> I'll say with, with men, um, I don't know. I had time to think about this and I really went blank for a second. <laughs> No, I, I would say with, with that, what women need to know about us is that we sometimes can be, we, we, need, we need our space to create and to do. And like my wife, she's one, she's big on quality time and she wants my attention, but there's times where I'm like, babe, I need a second to, you know, this and that. And it's Most like- Most time he doesn't even have to tell yeah, me. Now. And it's like, she knows right off the bat, like when, cause one thing with myself, like when, I'm in my creative space. Sometimes I get real quiet and I'm really like focused on whatever it is I'm doing. And it's like, you know, that space. And I, I feel like with, with men is that we are, I think a lot of men are very creative. And I think that one of the things that really helps us is when we have that space and that outlet to really be creative, that we can get a lot done. So that mm -hmm. once again, we're a reflection of each other. And right we should love each other just like you know christ loved us i would say mm -hmm. oh goodness oh, look take a note take a note <laughs> <laughs> oh my so goodness. for all right so next next category and this is probably going to about round it out mm -hmm. wisdom for singles wisdom for newlyweds wisdom for struggling mm -hmm. marriages uh, from each of us or yes from each of us oh. i go first i would say uh for you said singles first right singles newlyweds singles. and then okay i would say for singles carter come on buddy i would say for singles the thing i would say is be patient um mm. be patient on the one because nowadays like there's there's so much and there are so many different false advertisements, you know, and I would say singles really wait. And cause we, I, I feel like we're a prime example of when you allow God to do the choosing, you choose as well. And I, I feel like it, you know, singles is, it's a challenge because we're, we're in a, especially a highly sexual driven world mm -hmm. and, you know, just be patient. We, we waited and I feel like that, you know, for the singles and for the newlyweds, you know, I would say be patient <laughs> because, you know, same word, same word, because, you know, you're, you're two becoming one and that yeah. breaking chat, that breaking process of tearing down what mm -hmm. you remember and what you've been taught to become one with someone else is a challenge because it's like you're releasing the old and trying to embrace the new. And I feel like that is, that takes patience and you have to be patient with each other and you really have to give each other that space to grow and to really, you know, bond. And I would say for those that are struggling, you know, be patient as well. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that word goes all the way across. It, it does. You know, be patient. It, it, it does. It, yeah, it, it works. works. Yeah. yeah. Um, and be patient as well because We've actually, you know, we've had our moments, but the thing with us that helped us get through is we were patient with each other's process because not just with us coming together as one, we both were at different levels and different spaces in our lives. And we had to be patient even in that because she was trying to figure out who she was. I was trying to figure out who I was as a young man. And even as we gotten older, we're still, you know, we're evolving. And the more we evolve, we got to give that room for patience and really be there for each other because our commitment goes deeper than just the surface. And I feel like being patient is, is a, is a big key. Mm -hmm. uh, Amen. For me, I would say for the singles, um, don't ignore the red flags, you know, <laughs> just don't. <laughs> um, that speaks all by itself. Yes. Sometimes we ignore things and think that it's, you know, going to get better after marriage or, yep. you know, that's not always the yep. case. Do not ignore the red flags. You see them for a reason. Um, to the newlyweds, I would have to say the same thing Mizen says, be patient. There's so many um, struggles between, not, not mandatory struggles, so it doesn't happen, but things that are more common in the wow. zero to five years um, marriage. That, And I'm glad that we went through it because I get a chance to tell people like, it's, it's common. 
you're right at the right space for that. It's okay. And those are one of the things that I wish someone had told me in our, mm. especially in our year to five years, I wish someone had came to me and say, this is normal for this stage in your marriage. Yes. Um, yes. So, you know, I, that's what I really want people to know. Be patient. A lot of things are normal. Like my husband said, because you are trying to merge together as one. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, especially depending on where you're, where you're getting married at. If you're getting married later in life, you already have a whole life before this person. It's time. Right. It's, it's not going to be easy merging. It's not always going to be easy. Not to say it's impossible, but it's not always right. going to be easy merging together as one. So be patient mm-hmm. with each other. And for the struggling, I would say examine yourself first. Um, yeah. I can just speak for myself. It's so easy during the struggle to point and only see that other person's flaws. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said in in the and like I said earlier, um, I'm like I don't understand. I'm always right. I don't understand why you don't realize that I'm right. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't until I realized the areas that I needed to improve in that I actually saw things change. So. Um, Examine yourself first, you know, while we're pointing the fingers and all of that. Take a moment and examine yourself. Mm-hmm. Wow. Good stuff. If I had a mic, I'd throw it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. Wow. I love, 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 love. Awesome. This is so awesome. Oh, so many comments. I know, I don't know if you're peeping them as you go. Oh my gosh, yes, so many. Yes. So many good mm-hmm. reactions and comments and responses and yes, Lisa, yes, yes, Lisa, yes. <laughs> Lisa, no. Awesome. So, so we know that. Okay, so oh, we yes. um so before we close out, we always like to do an altar call. Mm-hmm. But before we do that, um tell us about your ministry. And I know you got a couple of things going on and how people can reach you or you know, um, the information that you shared with us before. Absolutely. So you guys can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Elevate Relationships. So that's Elevate Relationships. You can follow us on both platforms Mm -hmm. at the same handle. Um, So yeah, we encourage you to follow those platforms. We encourage you to sign up for our email subscription list. They are always the first people to know when anything else um, we decide to do anything. They are the first people to know. So you get the scoop on everything. Plus you get weekly encouragement from us to your emails um, concerning your relationships in any capacity. Not always just marriages, but concerning your relationships overall. Mm -hmm. You get those in your emails. And we also um, offer counseling and um, relationship, relationship coaching, coaching to yeah. married and single. So, you know, if you want to reach out to us for any of that, you can use those same platforms. Just DM us and we'll uh, get with you on that. And also we have uh, intimacy cards. Uh, Keep It Tight was an intensive that we did earlier this year. And it was really powerful. And out of that, uh, intensive, we were able to create uh, conversation starters from it. And um, each card has a question that, you know, if you have in, because some people think you got to be struggling to have these cards, but even we ourselves, oh, like there are times we use them all the time because we, because as married couples, you talk about work, you talk about the kids and it's like your bills and that, that becomes the topic of all of your conversation. So yes. what we did was we sat and we were like, you know what, let's use these. And we actually, before we you know, did this, we actually sat down and we asked ourselves these questions that we wrote and we ended up talking for hours, hours afterwards. Wow. And there was things that I found out about her that I didn't even know. And we've been married 16 years. And, um, but they're really, really wow. good. We've actually uh, sold out. We sold out of the first. <laughs> Of the the first, first batch that but we got. But you can pre-order the second. Yes. You can pre-order. Um, the, you are the. So they're going the real link is, Yeah, the link is up to pre-order, um, for the second batch that is coming out um, on the 16th. So yeah, that's what we have going on. The intimacy cards are pretty hot right now. It's 52 questions. 
that you can ask your spouse. We use we personally use them on date nights. We use them for pillow talk. We use them um, for just riding in the car, just me and him. So we enjoy them. I'm sorry, y'all. That's my part. son, I'm sorry. Part again. Um, we we, we, we raise toddlers. We know. It's fine. <laughs> we know what's up. Um, yeah. So you can click the link on our website um, or on our Facebook page or our Instagram bio, and the link is there for that. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we have going on. Follow us, and you'll get all the all that good stuff. Yeah. yeah. So so guys, go out. I mean, well, go out. Well, go on. Go on Facebook and Instagram. Look up Elevate Relationships. Um, mm-hmm. See um, the great things that they have going on. Order those cards if you're married. Mm-hmm. We encourage you to order the cards. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you some people get yeah. kind of it's kind of like taboo to talk about this kind of stuff, but I think it's awesome. Yeah, and, and I think we that, questions are very there's some spicy stuff in there. Spicy stuff. But it, 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 it married folk needs the spice. Yeah, yeah it's, it's real. <laughs> and that's the it's point real, because like, I feel like they're especially with say married folks they're like there are some conversations that we avoid. But with this, it actually helps you press that, you know, that conversation and have them, yeah. you know, wholesomely. So it's, it's really good. It's yeah. Really good. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank y'all so much. So we always ask our visiting pastors um, if yeah. they would, um, if they would do the altar call at the end of every live. So if we want to leave that in your hands, either one of you can do that um, to extend Jesus to our listeners and our viewers. And then yes. close us out with prayer. Yes, because we have a good time on here. We yeah. laugh and kid and cut up, but trust and believe. Yes, Jesus it's is all center. about Jesus. Jesus is yeah. center of it all. <laughs> and he gets all the glory yes. for everything um, that we do. We do this for him, not for us. We're not trying to be in the spotlight. We're not trying to be famous or get any type of reputation. We just want to spread the good news of Jesus. And 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 what we're doing here this month. Um, and like you said, Jesus was your foundation to your your dating and your marriage so he's very important and uh, we just want to offer him to anybody because we all need him <laughs> you do pray when you all right um i would say even with the altar call like a lot of people would look and say well i didn't have jesus in the beginning of you know my story and that's all well and fine you know but the thing is wherever you come to the knowledge of what what you're missing and what you need that's the point where you have to make that decision Mm -hmm. and i just pray that everybody that is listening you know regardless of where you found yourself tonight or regardless of what hit you whatever point that is start from that point because having christ as a centerpiece in any marriage is the best thing you can ever do because a threefold cord is not so easily broken Mm -hmm. and when you actually have him regardless to what goes on in your marriage it will all fall to pieces on him. And he's able to take all those pieces and put it back together, you know, and to understand that he is much more than just a savior. He is, he's a matchmaker. He, he is, he is the lover of our soul. He's the Lord of, he's yeah. everything. And when you understand yeah. how important he is in a marriage, and I hope that our testimony really showed that him being the center. And whenever we t- share our testimony, we always let people know is that he was the one that orchestrated this. And by him orchestrating it, you know, that means that everything is gonna be sustained and he's gonna keep whatever is committed into his hands. So I just extend to everybody, let Jesus be the centerpiece. Let Jesus be the one to really shape and mold, you know, regardless of what point in your marriage, your relationship, wherever you are, starting from this point, accept him and allow him to be that centerpiece. And I guarantee you that you will have the best success you've ever experienced because it's only because of him that all things are perfect. Amen. All right, and I'm going to do the prayer. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we give you all the glory tonight, God. We thank you for this time that you have allotted us to be together, God. And Lord, we just ask you right now for the hearers tonight, God, who have decided in their hearts, God, to give you a try tonight, who have made the choice, God, right now, God, to choose you, God. Father, I pray right now, God, Lord, that you would, God, Lord, help them right now to receive you, God. 
into their hearts, into their minds, God, into their spirits today, oh God, and allow you to lead them and to guide them along the way. I pray right now tonight, oh God, that Lord, that each and every person, God, Lord, that is uh, listening tonight, God, Lord, that they would be encouraged tonight, God, and to know, God, that you and you alone, God, can do what needs to be done in our lives. Father, right now, God, we submit completely and totally, God, to your will and to your way, God, and we ask you, God, that you would get the glory out of us tonight, oh God. Father, I pray right now for our host tonight, God, as Lord, their hearts and their minds are simply to give you all the praise and all the glory and to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. We ask you right now, God, that you will bless them, God. Lord, uh, multiple folds, God, right now, Father God, that Lord, that their work and their labor would not be in vain, oh God. And Lord, we just thank you and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. Hang tight. Everybody else, we get ready to let y'all go. I just want to say something else to them when y'all go. Um, (laughs) Next week, we're doing this every Monday, y'all. I hope y'all praying for us because we be enjoying them middle weeks when we don't have to come (laughs) together <laughs> this is work but it's work we love to do yes, y'all we, yes. i'm telling you mm-hmm. i love the mondays that we do come on this first and third monday but only in february yes one month only y'all yes we're doing this every <laughs> monday so next monday yep. we have elder and uh, elder aaron deal and lady jackie deal will be with us um, sharing. Ah, uh, I know, I'm so excited. I'm like, so every week I'm just like, oh, yay. <laughs> it's just going to be something, you know, to look for after Sunday, right? Yes. You know, because, you know, we get Sunday morning and it's like, okay. We're going to do it on Monday, y'all. So yes. Elder Aaron and Lady Jackie Deal will be with us sharing their love story mm-hmm. next Monday at 7, 7 p.m. p.m. on, and that's the kind of God mm-hmm. we serve. Yes. <laughs> so I love you all. Thank we'll you all you so guys much for joining week. us. Thanks for joining. God bless. Share, share, share. Yeah, share. And if you came in, please go back and watch the replay because you probably missed some really good nuggets. Yes the beginning so we want you to hear their whole love story it's a beautiful story guys Mm -hmm. so make sure you go back and watch the replay good night